All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed. Welcome to one more show. So during the COVID time, we had been discussing uh, hospitalizations, sadly, the deaths of people as well. However, there is a uh, set of our population which got uh, injury in a way that they are now disabled. So I wanted to see how that disability data is looking for the US. Maybe we'll discuss for the other countries at another time, but US disability data has risen since COVID-19. So let's very quickly look at it together. So this is my drawing for US disability data. And then the, sorry, here is the graph. So this is the uh, graph from Fred. 16 plus labor force disabilities chart. So this is those individuals who are 16 years and plus who are eligible for work. They may or may not be in the workforce, but they are the labor force. So they may be employed or not. So if you see here, this is 2020 January. So that is when the COVID was starting. And before that, this is 16 years graph. So before that, if you see, the data was mostly in this 6,000 average line. And th this is in thousands of persons. So that means 6 million disabled individuals at any time. And the data kept going up and down. However, since 2020, January, if you see, first there was a tiny decline and that may be reporting issue. And then there is a rise. And now it is consistently about 8,400 or 8.4 million people disabled. So if we take here an average, not statistically accurate, but an average of 6,000 or 6 million here, now we are at 8.4 million average disabled individuals. Now, possible causes could be um, in um, I think it is fair to say long COVID is one of the such causes. Post-vaccine syndrome is another such reason. Then mental health crisis during the shutdowns and during the financial disruption and then inability to go meet friends and have the normal life and then the scare of the COVID and the uh, the deaths from COVID and even I was discussing a daily discussion of who, how many people died and hospitalized. So mental health crisis is a very important aspect of this all, many times overlooked. And sadly, uh, the people with the correct and true mental health, health crisis were overlook, overlooked. And the people who were disabled because of long COVID or vaccine injury were called to have psychological issues. So very strange behavior of the medical system. Then delayed medical care. It is possible that during the COVID time, they were, there was fear of going to hospitals and then fear of getting infected or, or um, you know, becoming a victim to COVID. So because of that, some people, many people actually delayed their follow-ups. I have a friend who is a very dear friend of mine, and she said that she had delayed her mammograms for three years and never in her whole life. And she has now just gotten um, the examination and found out that she has breast cancer. So delayed medical care is a possibility as well. Increased diagnostic awareness. And I think this is a true thing that since COVID, we have become more aware for our health. However, we are trying to tackle that. We are trying to tackle that correctly or incorrectly, but the medical and the health issues have become an important awareness for us. That would have also created some more um, diagnosis for disability as well. Then the healthcare system strain. So on one end, there were people who were not going to hospitals and clinics to follow up, in the fear of, um, you know, getting COVID. On the other end, the healthcare system it was itself was under strain as well, and did not have the opportunities as often and frequently as we have today, or we had before COVID. 
Then accident reduction. So this is an interesting, of course, accident re reduction will not increase disabilities, but would reduce it. And it is complicated as I write here, because in the beginning of the shutdowns, the motor vehicle accidents were reduced. However, as the shutdown eased, the motor vehicle accidents actually increased. And there are many reasons, and you can do that. Um, uh, you can study those on the accidents um, agency's data. But the motor vehicle accidents then increased. And so that washed out the reduction and then increased. So the accident related um, disabilities kind of did not become participant in this. So this is what do you think? Is there any other reason that I left or are you aware of any other reasons? So once again, if we can very quickly look at the graph. That graph shows. So if I'm going to just mouse over this. So this is February 2020, 6,420, so 6.4 million, and then 6.4 million March. And in June 2020, 6.2 million, then 6.4, 6 million, even 5.8 million. And I feel that may be just reporting issue because the healthcare system was just busy. Anyways, then, and people were just shutting down and so on. Um, or the, there were lockdowns, not people shutting down. Then here in June 2021, 6.7 million. Then September 21, 7 million. Then 7.4 million. And it just kept going up. This is 2022, 7.7 .7 million. And then this is 2023, 8.3 million. And now since 2023, the numbers are hovering in 8 million, 8.4, 8.3 million range. So it has gone up from 6 point some million to 8 point some million. So 2 million uh, fo uh, folks are an additional disabilities um, eligible individuals. And you can see that that is happening after 2019. So of course, the reason, some of the reasons that I discuss may have something to do with that. The I actually feel that there may be even more who are disabled and who are not recognized and who are not included. And also this data does not include anyone who is not seeking job, retired, or, or those who are just out of the labor force. They're not included in this. So with this, thank you very much. I would really love to know what is your thought about the disability data. And I would also want to show you something that is interesting. So if I go back here for the full screen for a second, I've created a new YouTube channel. The reason for this was that my current channel, the one on which you're watching this video, has become from medical education to more of COVID, then vaccines, and then nutrition, and diabetes, and inflammation. And so I wanted to separate out the medical lectures. So I created a new account, which may be a bit confusing name, but Dr. Bean Medical Education instead of lectures. And over here, this is just purely medical teaching that I used to you to do. So if you are a medical professional or a medical student, nursing student, healthcare student, and if you are just interested in the medical lectures, then join here where we are just uh, uploading medical uh, lectures and nothing else. Um, I have also started uploading the premium courses that are on Dr. Bean over here. But if you would like to have CMEs, then you can go to Dr. Bean and get the CMEs. So yesterday we uploaded the pain management lateral spinothalamic tract part one, which is actually a part of a paid course on Dr. Bean. And we would upload the whole course over here. So that is a quick um, update for the second lecture. And thank you very much. I will see you uh, hopefully this Thursday. Bye for now. And I would like to ask you, do you have any uh, any topic that I've not covered? For example, I just came across this data and I thought I had never talked about it. So if there is anything that you think I have missed, please write it down and I would discuss that. Thank you very much. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description to support it. And of course, like, subscribe and share. Bye for now.